my name is Jacqueline Boydum. I'm at the Chemical Heritage Foundation and I'm going to talk to you about some technologies developed for determining chemical structure in the 20th century. One of the first technologies developed to um, look at the structure of molecules in the early 1900s was the spectrophotometer. Um, some early versions of this were developed in the 19th century by uh, Robert Bunsen, who is most famous for developing the Bunsen burner. National Technical Laboratories, which had developed a um, electronic pH meter uh, in the early 1900s, had developed circuitry that was appropriate for a spectrophotometer, and they were the first to develop a um, UV viz spectrophotometer. This is their model DU. National Technical Laboratories had done such a good job with this spectrophotometer that the government asked them to investigate an infrared version, um, and they had developed the IR1 by the early 1940s. IR spectrophotometers were necessary for determining um, the best way to manufacture synthetic rubber. At the time of the Second World War, the United States was the world's largest consumer of rubber, but we had lost supplies from Southeast Asia after Pearl Harbor. So scientists were working to develop a synthetic rubber out of butadiene gases from petroleum plants, and there are three different uh, monomers that could be used to make the rubber. And it was necessary to find the appropriate monomer to make um, a rubber for a particular need. The IR1 spectrophotometer was type A classified, which meant that it was only used for very special projects. And that enabled um, National Technical Laboratories, or what is now Beckman Instruments, to be able to uh, develop a very specialized product, but it wasn't very applicable after the war. Meanwhile, Perkin Elmer had developed another infrared spectrophotometer that wasn't as classified, so they were able to distribute it to wider industries, and it served other purposes more readily after the war than the Beckman IR-1. IR spectrophotometers were also important for determining ways to manufacture synthetic penicillin after the war, so they served medical purposes as well as military. Another imaging technology developed in the 20th century is X-ray crystallography probably most famous from Rosalind Franklin's pictures, which allowed Watson and Crick to determine the double helix structure of DNA. X-ray crystallography is done with a device like this, an X-ray source, um, and imaged with a camera. It produces films such as these, which are pictures of adenovirus, um, which is the subject of studies by Roger Burnett in the middle of the 20th century. Roger Burnett fed these films into a computer which analyzed them for their electron densities and printed out maps indicating the densities which were put on films and spaced appropriately so that they looked like a model of the adenovirus. Today, adenovirus is well understood and it's used to modify genes in plants and animals. Before scientists had the luxury of using computer software to illustrate their experimental results in determining chemical structures, they had to go through great efforts to um, model their findings. John Kendrew, for instance, had to build a large brass model of the myoglobin protein that he was studying, much like the one we have here of chemotrypsin. Um, and he later collaborated with an American artist and architect named Irving Geis, who drew pictures such as this one for Scientific American and allowed his model to be seen outside the laboratory. To learn more about these technologies for determining chemical structure, visit our museum in Philadelphia or our website, chemheritage.org. I'm Jacqueline Boydum. Thank you for watching.